Chapter Three, The Monster. At the end of the day, Mrs. Brisbane handed out flyers to all my friends. This is the information about Family Fun Night. Please share it with your families. They can mark the date on their calendar. As soon as the papers were in my friend's backpacks, the bell rang and they raced out of the room. Slow down, Simon was the first student out as usual. Hurry up, Harry was the last student to gather up his coat and hat and leave room 26. Mrs. Brisbane straightened the papers on her desk and then she came over to the window and looked out. I hope we see signs of spring soon, she said. We usually do by now. We saw the crocus, I reminded her. Miss Brisbane looked at me and smiled. I imagine that you're ready for spring too. She looked over at Og. How about you, Og? Og didn't answer. He just dived into the water, water side of his tank and started swimming. Mrs. Brisbane chuckled. At least you have a swimming pool year round. Hamsters like me don't like swimming, but I guess humans and frogs do. After Miss Brisbane was gone for the day and before Aldo came to clean, I told Og I was going to visit Gigi. I wanted to make sure she saw the flower in the snow before it was dark. Hi, Humphrey, Gigi happily squeaked as I slid under the door. I scurried over to the table and swung myself up. I was a little out of breath when I said, did you see the first sign of spring? No, Gigi said, looking around her cage. Where is it? Outside, I replied. Luckily, the blinds were open. Gigi looked toward the window and I twisted her head from, and twisted her head from side to side. I don't see anything but a little snow on the ground. Open your door, I said, remember how? Gigi leaned against the door, wiggled and jiggled until it popped open. I can't believe that really worked, she said. The two of us moved closer to the window and looked out. Look over to, look over to the right, near that tall tree. There's something purple on the ground, I explained. Gigi squinted and stared and then she said, what is that? I explained about the crocus being the first flower of spring pushing up through the snow. I don't think flowers grow when it's cold, Gigi said. I explained that they usually don't, but sometimes they pop up right through the snow. It's beautiful, Gigi whispered. We sat for a while staring at the little speck of purple in the white snow. Finally, I said, did Miss Mack tell the class about family fun night? Uh-huh, Gigi said. Sounds like fun. But will there be a lot of people there? And will it be noisy? Yes, I laughed. I think there will be a lot of people. And when people are having fun, they're usually noisy. Gigi giggled. That's true. She paused for a while and then she said, families are awfully nice. I nodded. I've been to homes with lots of wonderful families. I always get a warm feeling in my toes when I see families together. Me too, Gigi agreed. Of course, I don't have a family. I don't have one either, I said, but I must have had a family sometime. I mean, as mammals, we had a mother and a father and probably brothers and sisters. I can't remember, Gigi sounded sad. Neither can I, I said, but everybody has a family somewhere. Gigi went back into that cage, into her cage. I helped her shut the door so it looked as if she had, it hadn't been open. I'm sorry the blinds are open, I said. At least I saw the crocus, she said. And Miss Max said she left a note for Aldo to close the blinds when he's done cleaning. She knows I need my sleep. Leave it to Miss Mack to understand a classroom pet. Sleep well, I told her. When I got back to my cage in room 26, I told Og all about my visit. Boing, 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 he twanged when I talked about families. Do you remember your family, I asked him. He didn't answer. He just dived into the water with a huge splash. I'm sure you had a nice one, I said, as I returned to my cage. I'm sure we all did, if we could only remember. When Aldo cleaned the classroom that night, he was restless. As he swept the floor, he muttered to himself, but of course, Og and I could hear him. It's all happening at once, he said. Final exams, graduation, job hunting, and the two new babies. It's too much. My whiskers wiggled as I heard him talking. Didn't Aldo want to graduate from college, get a better job, and be the father of twins? Aldo emptied the floor sweepings into the trash can. What if I fail, he said. You won't, I squeaked. Never, never, never. Og chimed in with a very loud, boing, boing. I was surprised when Aldo laughed. You too, he said. You never let a friend down, do you? I certainly hope not, I squeaked back. Even though Aldo couldn't understand me, I was warmly rewarded with a sweet and tender piece of lettuce from the sandwich he ate on his break. Thanks, pal, he told us as he threw a froggy fish stick into my friend's tank. You're welcome, Aldo, I replied. 
On Friday afternoon, I saw the biggest grin I've ever seen. It was Joey smiling when Mrs. Brisbane announced that I'd be going home with him for the weekend. I was delighted to see him so happy, but I was also a little worried. Sometimes he talked about his dog, Skipper, who was very good at catching a frisbee with his teeth. Skipper must have large and sharp teeth to catch something flying through the air at great speed. I'm not fond of dogs with large, sharp teeth because I've had bad experiences with them in the past. I never thought it would happen, Joey said as he picked up my cage. I wish we could go home right away, but I have to go to after school program. You can come with me. I'd never heard of an after school program before, but anything that had to do with fun to, with school is fun, fun, fun to me. Joey carefully carried my cage and his coat down the hall. The gym is an enormous room with bleachers and a stage. It wasn't my first time there, but it was my first time there for the after school program. I was happy to see many of my friends. Calm down, Cassie, tell the truth, Thomas, hurry up, Harry, and helpful Holly from my class were there. But so were some friends from last year's class. Raise your hand, Heidi. Don't complain, Mandy. Pay attention, Art. Speak up, Saya. And sit down, Seth. They all seemed so happy to see me. As soon as Joey put my cage down on a table, everyone gathered around. Humphrey the hamster, Art said. It's Humphrey Dumpty, Mandy said. That was the nickname AJ had given me. No, he's the humpster, Harry said. That was a new nickname I'd never heard before. The humpster, the humpster. My friends began to chant. I liked my, new, my silly new nickname. Their chanting stopped suddenly when a loud whis whistle blasted and my small hamster ears began to vibrate. Ow, I squeaked. Of course, I knew who blew the whistle. I'd seen it and heard it many times. Mrs. Wright, the PE teacher and owner of the whistle leaned over my cage. What is the hamster doing in my gym? I hopped on my wheel and squeaked, getting some exercise. I braced myself in case she blew the whistle, but instead she leaned in closer. Well, at least it's getting some exercise. And then she stood up and looked around. Who brought this animal to my gym? Joey stepped forward. I did, I'm taking him home for the weekend, but my mom wouldn't be here until 5.30, so I thought he should come with me. Mrs. Wright shook her head. I wish Miss Brisbane would have cleared things with me. Couldn't he have stayed in the classroom? Yes, Joey answered, but Miss Brisbane locks the door when, he le when she leaves, so how would I get him out? Yes, how? I squeaked at Mrs. Wright, even though the squeak to squeak the truth, I'm a bit afraid of her. No pets allowed in the after-school program, she said. Can you imagine what the gym would look like with dogs and cats and rabbits and hamsters running loose around the gym? She put it that way. I could see her point. I didn't want to be running around with dogs and cats in the gym or anywhere else. Joey looked down at my cage. What should I do? Mrs. Wright sighed. Well, there he's here now, so I guess this time we'll have, he'll have to stay, but never again. Sometimes Mrs. Wright's voice makes me shiver and quiver because I'm worried that she blew that, I'm worried that she blow that loud whistle. I have an idea, Joey said to Mrs. Wright. She had her head on the hand on the whistle as she looked down at him. We could build a hamster maze for Humphrey, he said. He loves that. A hamster maze, she asked in a way that made me think she didn't approve of hamsters or mazes. We put up books or bricks or whatever to make the maze and watch Humphrey run through it. Maybe we could make a human maze too, Joey said. Mrs. Wright thought for a moment. I guess that would keep us all active and out of trouble, she said. Keeping active was really, really, really important to her. That's one thing we had in common. Before I knew it, there was a lovely maze on the gymnasium floor made of gymnastics mats and backpacks and cones and I don't know what. There I was, running through it as fast as my paws could take me, and there were my friends all cheering me on. It wasn't until I got to the end that Mrs. Wright blew her whistle. Ick, that was loud! But when my friends shouted, Yay, hamster! Yay, hamster! I felt hamsterific. Next, my friends all ran through the maze, and I think Mrs. Wright was pretty happy to see them moving. Faster, Harry, you can do it. Go for it, Mandy, she shouted. When she wasn't blowing her whistle, she actually seemed like a very nice human. The time passed quickly, so when just Joey's mom showed up, I couldn't believe it. It was 5.30 and time to go home. 
Wait until you meet Skipper. Joey put a warm blanket over my cage as we headed to the car. Meet a dog with sharp teeth? I could wait. Humphreys spring things. It's fun to be with friends and run a maze. But when it comes to dogs, I'd like to wait a few more days.